Good day. My name is Nelson Stone, and I'm going to speak about the radiation dose requirements for local disease eradication and what those implications are for focal therapy. I have no disclosures. These are the issues. How much radiation is required to eradicate prostate cancer? How do we equate external and internal or brachytherapy or radiation? And once we know what the dose is in order to eradicate prostate cancer, what are the implications for focal therapy treatment? I'm gonna address these by looking at what's published in the literature for both external beam irradiation and for brachytherapy. So here are five publications where men had external beam irradiation and two plus years after their treatment, they were subject to biopsies, either for cause or as part of a protocol. And what I've done here is I've shown you the data based on the delivered radiation dose going from 66 gray for Dr. Crook's study down up to 81 gray for Dr. Zalewski's study. And as you can see, quite clear that as the dose of external beam radiation goes up, correspondingly, the likelihood of finding positive biopsy two, two plus years after treatment goes down from 43% to 12%. There's not a lot of published data, data in the literature talking about uh, the positive biopsy rates after treatment with brachytherapy. And here at Mount Sinai, we have actually published the majority of the data. One of our earlier publications, we looked at three groups of men, those who had low dose radiation, those who had a normal dose, and those who had high dose. So when we put this data together, we didn't really have any way to equate the external beam data with the implant data and recognizing that there were men, especially those with high-risk disease who received the combination of implant and external beam, we had very crude methods. So we, we took men who had received less than the standard dose as defined by the American Brachytherapy Society, those who received the standard dose and those that received a much higher dose of radiation. Typically that was with combination therapy or their implants were, they were given an implant at a much higher dose. And what we found, again, this is two plus years after treatment, that there was a direct relationship between the dose of radiation given and the likelihood of having a positive biopsy after therapy, from 29% down to 4.4%. In 2007, we went to work with our, our physicist, uh, Dr. Barry Rosenstein, and we came up with this methodology so we could look at the dose of radiation delivered by the implant and the dose of radiation delivered either by external beam alone or external beam plus the implant. And this was called the biologically effective dose. Now, this has been previously published, but we put this formula to work in a clinical context so we could look at the results of in uh, terms of PSA failure and in terms of local failure, failure. So this is the BED, and that's the acronym for biologically effective dose. In a very simplistic fashion, you can take a look at this similar to sitting out in the sun. So when you're sitting out in the sun and you feel the sun on you, you can feel the heat. However, after that, when you look at it a day or two later, you can see you've got a sunburn. So the heat is like the physical dose we prescribe, let's say it's 81 gray of external beam, and the sunburn is the results of the biological effect of the sun on your skin. And quite similarly, we're being exposed to photons when we get a sunburn, and that's photons are what you're being exposed to when you're delivered x-ray therapy. So in this paper, we've looked at different BED groups going from less than or equal to 100 gray to above 200 gray, and you can see, again, there's a direct relationship from the dose received to the likelihood of having a positive biopsy. So by the time an individual received 180 gray, the positivity rate was between one and 3%. And when one looked at a regression analysis, really the only factor that was significant in associated with a positive post-treatment biopsy was a BED. Look here, the Gleason score is not significant. The PSA is not significant. So what this really means is 
it doesn't matter what type of disease the patient has. It only matters how much radiation and therapy is used in order to get rid of the local tumor. And we subgrouped this. This is a paper we gave at the AUA this year, and we looked at different Gleason gray groups, one, two to three, and four to five, and the amount of radiation required to eliminate the local disease. And I thought it was quite striking that with men with a Gleason uh, score of six or a gray group of one, if you gave a really low dose of radiation, 150 gray, it's really not that low as I'll tell you in a minute, or you went above 200 gray, there was a striking de decrease in the likelihood of having a positive biopsy. Now this sort of goes against the idea that Gleason gray group six, Gleason uh, gray group one or Gleason score six can be observed because here it's showing you positive biopsy rates are much higher when they got low radiation, which could be assumed to be like they got no radiation versus when they got an adequate dose of radiation. And the same is true with the Gleason uh, sevens and eights and the Gleason uh, eight to tens. There was a direct relationship between the dose of radiation and the likelihood of eradicating the disease. So now I put this together in a, a chart that converts these physical doses for the external beam and looks at the doses I just described. And in the Crook study, where we had a 43% positive biopsy rate, the BED was 125. And it continues to go up, and the highest was a BED of 154, and that was in the Zaleski study that had 81 gray, and they still had a 12% positivity rate. And so if you look at the data I just showed you, if the BED is less than or equal to 150, so somewhere in this range, then you get a 20% positivity rate, which is not so dissimilar to the external beam. And as you go up, you see a corresponding drop in positivity rate. So above 200 gray, we're at 3.3%. And but when you get to 240 gray, you actually had no positive biases. So our number that we would want to consider for treating prostate cancer focally has got to be between 200 and 240 gray, a BED. And there is a direct relationship between uh, positive biopsy and cause-specific survival. And men lost about 25%. So 94.2% 15-year survival for a negative biopsy versus 69% for a positive biopsy. So a positive biopsy has dire consequences. And it not only has dire consequences for men where we treat the whole gland. Remember, these were not focal therapy. This was whole gland irradiation. But why would it be any different for men with a disease where we want to treat the focal therapy? If we fail and it's a higher grade lesion, a grade group two or higher, there could be a significant consequence in cause specific survival when you follow the patients out. Now, I also want to point out that five years is no difference. And even at 10 years is not much difference. So this takes long follow up to know the impact of an adequate dose of radiation. So when we look at focal therapy data, and there's not a lot, um, we need to know how it compares to whole gland treatment with a good 15 years of follow-up. Now, I'm gonna show you this study out of, uh, from Dr. Langley and Dr. Emberton in Guilford and uh, College of London. And this is just a planning study. They looked at can we do this focal therapy? So this is not actual patients that were done, but it, it just sort of gives you the idea of what we should be looking at. So here's a MRI, T2 image, and there's the region of interest. You can see the nice hypo-intense area circled by the red. And here they, they decided they were gonna plan it out with a hemiablation. So the, here's the hemiprostate in red. The green dots represent the seeds, and these cloud lines around represent what we call the isodose lines. And the orange line, the yellow line rather, right here, is, is encompassing the whole gland, represents 100% of the dose. So this was a planning dose of 145 gray, which has a BED of about 155. Here is the lesion in this area. 
as depicted here. So this area where the lesion is, just it doesn't show it here, but that's about the dose I was describing. That's about 240 gray. So what they did is plan this out and they said, okay, let's assume or make believe that there's a lesion here and maybe there's a couple other lesions and we've covered most of the prostate with 150%. Here, they did what they call an ultrafocal therapy. They said, we're just gonna treat the lesions and they're applying the very high dose region to the lesion and they're leaving most of the prostate without radiation. You can see in the, the middle picture B, the green here is the urethra. So the urethra is getting some of this higher dose, but in this ultrafocal therapy plan, the urethra is not getting the higher dose and neither is the rectum here at the bottom. So for one solitary lesion like this, uh, it's possible in theory anyway, to get these high doses in this one area, as long as there's no prostate in the rest of the prostate. That, that's the caveat. These plans were based on MRI fusion. And as the data I showed you in the mapping biopsy uh, uh, talk, the likelihood of having cancer and high-grade cancer in other, the re other regions of the prostate is not insubstantial. So taking this approach without eliminating the risk of other cancers, it presents a problem, but at least in theory, this is showing you this is uh, really possible with brachytherapy. So in conclusion, poster radiation biopsies imply that a BED of greater than or equal to 240 gray can eradicate all prostate cancer. If the tumor volume is small, that means one or two quadrants, then potential for high dose to just those regions can make this a feasible approach. Large tumor volumes or extensive multifocality usually mean that the patient should have a full dose treatment. Uh, so if we're talking about brachytherapy and that we're talking about grade three to four disease, we can get away with a full dose implant to a higher dose. Remember I talked about how much radiation is necessary. But if we're talking about grade four to five disease, so Gleason eight to 10, and we've got multifocality or large volume disease, then we still believe the best way to go about this is with a partial implant, which we call a boost, plus external beam radiation, typically given as 100 gray of uh, iodine plus 45 gray of um, external beam, or for example, palladium 103 plus external beam or cesium 131 plus external beam. Thank you.